Bill 253 initiates an amendment to Article 3, Section 3-6 of the Hawaii County Charter 2012 edition relating to the term of appointment for the county clerk. Establishes a six-year term for the county clerk. Reference communication 876 introduced by Mr. Yoshimoto approved FC-174 note. First of three required readings, a two-thirds vote of the entire membership is required to pass each reading pursuant to section 15-1A Hawaii County Charter. Uh, Ms. Eoff. Thank you. Could I have a motion? Motion to approve Bill 253. So moved. Second. Thank you. Mr. Yoshimoto. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, council members, I didn't make any amendments uh, to this uh, bill, basically because I just feel like it's you know, good to go as is. However, you know, I'm willing to listen to any um, amendments or any other ideas that council members had mentioned uh, the last time. So um, we're ready to proceed. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure who had on their light first. Um, light? Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Four of us. You mean me, 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 more. Okay, Mr. Onishi. Oh, thank you. It's, um, I would like to amend Bill 251 with the communication of 876.2. Second. Okay, it's been okay. moved by Mr. Onishi and seconded by Mr. Kanuha. Okay. And this is just to change the period of six years to four years. And I didn't want to do anything about qualifications and so forth, which was mentioned before, because I felt that maybe it should be left up to the council, the upcoming council that needs to decide instead of we trying to um, tie their hands. But then, but I felt that the four years, it's, it's I think more reasonable than doing a six year term. So I ask for your support, thanks. Um, okay, thank you, Ms. Ford. Thank you, on Mr. Onishi's amendment. I have to say that I prefer a six-year term. I think Mr. Yoshimoto is correct um, to make it a non-political situation. However, at the last meeting, I discussed qualifications, and I'll do that in a little while. I do like the idea that this should take place uh, in 2016, on December 5th, 2016. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> okay, well, that's in Mr. Onishi's bill, December 6th, 2016. I think that is a smart thing to do because it gives the council time to do it. But the four years, I cannot, I don't want to support it because, and when we get into my, my uh, amendment, that's when I'll really discuss that. But. I'd kind of like to discuss both of these amendments simultaneously because I think he's got a really good idea about December 16th, uh, December 5th, 2016, but I can't support the, the four years, so I would have to vote against this one. Okay. Um, Ms. Willie. And, um, on, no, wait, on the amendment? Oh, okay. Okay, this is on um, communication 876.2, Mr. Onishi's amendment. Ms. Poindexter, did you want to speak on that? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Kanuha. Thank you, Madam Chair. I actually um, will support this amendment. I think it's a compromise in that currently it's just two years. Um, and the six year uh, was, you know, it kind of was iffy for me. You know, I still had, I kind of had a little issue with be it being so long. So I felt that for me, when I saw this, I, th I thought it was a, it was a good compromise um, in the four years. I I'll still support the bill in totality, but I, I thought the, for myself, the four years was a little bit more, comp was a little bit more for me able to take. So I'll, I'll, I'll support this amendment. Um, Can I ask a question? Um, just in terms of the date change, can you just explain the rationale for that? Take your time. So, <laughs> we, I thought about it, yeah, and the thing is, because this is going to be in the 2014 general elections, I was, I was thinking it's going to be like maybe too, too close for the new council to or organize and get all these, you know, if they do have qualifications that they want to put in that, you know, going to take time. So this way, if this passes, at least the next council in 2016 will have an idea or at least like 2014 council can kind of give a rough idea of what the qualification should be or and so forth and then come 16 then this it comes you know then you implement the program and so that's why I did it because I just felt it was too close 
and too short of time. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Ilagan. Thank you, Mad Madam Chair. Um, may I ask Chair Yoshimoto a question? <clears throat> Go ahead. Um, I'm trying to understand the principle of your bill. Regarding the six years, what was the main purpose of having it six years rather than um, you deciding six rather than four or eight? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the main purpose is just to provide stability for the office. You know, um, I think I mentioned before that uh, you know, having been here for four terms, you know, we've seen actually the church, the clerk change, you know, every um, every two years, and it's based upon my, my experience um, as a council member, talking to members of the public as well as the staff. I just believe six years provides some stability, continuity. Um, you know, it's still going to be a political process once every six years, but it's something that. Um, is less volatile, so hopefully we'll attract uh, people that are committed to um, to a longer stay in government to serve not, not only the council but the people. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you know this question is kind of a little bit um, off, but uh, Dan Inouye, the senator, his is six years term, right? And it feels like that six-year term is stability too. If we bring it down to four, will it hinder the main principle of stability? Um, I'm not sure. It's a rhetorical question right now. Um, if you know the answer, please. Well, yeah, I only can speak from my perspective, and I think the longer term you have, similar to the auditor, um, I think the more stability you have, the less likely it is to be changed, um, you know, for political reasons rather than for for actual uh, job-related duty reasons. That's why there's the for cause um, provision in there. Um, so, yeah, you know. It, I, I'm not going to support this amendment because I believe that the whole intent was to provide that stability. I can see the rationale behind four years. Um, you know, that just shortens the time period. And of course, um, uh, you know, that just gives the, the council an, an opportunity to, to change that position every four years. So it, it's just a matter of uh, your outlook on what you want to see, you know, for the clerk's office. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. So with my thoughts, I... The reason why you would we would go for four would be to compromise on the years. And for me, it's compromising the main principle of the intention of the bill, which is the stability for it. So I won't be supporting the amendment, and I will be sticking to the six years. Thank you. Madam Chair. Ms. Ford. Thank you. Let, let me try to add a little more. I hope meet to this discussion on the six years. When we did the six years for the legislative auditor, the whole purpose was, well, there were multiple purposes, but the first purpose was to have stability. The second purpose was to pull it out of the political environment. That means because we, we change, the council changes in some way every two years, and it was to prevent or hopefully deflect uh, politics in that particular office. Um, so, and also we made it an in independent auditor. That is, the council selects them by a very good process, which we use this year, but unless it's for cause, you can't pull them off. I see the clerk exactly the same way. And I have to tell you, I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more but in depth, but nationally, the professional clerks of the country, county, city, or parish, in some places they're called parishes, it's an, it's, and this has gone on for several years, the level of professionalism in this particular job is rising across the country. Almost half, 24 states, elect their county clerk. I didn't think that was such a good idea because I think as a council we can set qualifications that are good and reasonable and in my opinion the county clerk shouldn't be involved in the political process at all. That's just me and that's why I didn't want them elected. Um, but nationally there are organizations that train county clerks. There's only maybe 16 in the whole country. We aren't going to get one of those that are already trained. But there's organizations where training goes on to raise the professional standards of 
the county clerks and I don't mean to imply that this county clerk or any past county clerk hasn't been professional that is not what I'm saying but they're considered a public official and therefore and they're not an elected official therefore we need to have qualified for instance we wouldn't hire someone for corporation counsel that wasn't an attorney to give us legal advice and so the public official in this county who will be giving us election advice and overseeing the elections and doing all those things and keeping records and, and going out to the public needs to be a person who follows the same basic guidelines. Ms. Ford, this is on the, the amendment. That's the, right. That's why I'm saying years. I don't support this four-year okay. term. In our county, most places have a four-year election cycle. We're on a two-year election cycle. You can hardly get into the job and right now and learn the job and then you're into an election cycle. So what you want is to have the longer term, the six year term, which allows someone to go through three full election cycles. They're gonna be on top of their game by the second cycle and certainly in the third it should be no problem. That's why I can't support the four years. I agree with Mr. Illigan that it, by going back to four years, we're defeating several purposes. It's completely trained in some areas and also pull them out of the political Political environment. Um, so, for that reason, I continue to support the six year term. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Um, Ms. Willie? Um, I, I do support the amendment. I think it's a, a good compromise. Um, I think it's the way we have it set up right now. Yes, we all confirm, but we're really largely dependent on the chair's choice and selection. Now, Jay made an excellent choice this time, and as far as I'm concerned, but I can very well see someone being in in the chair position and choosing someone that I really don't like. Um, so I'm not saying um, elect, but I think that at least feeling, well, four years, okay, but six would just, is like more than I think I, I trust, okay? I mean, if you want to rearrange the whole system and have it be that we go through the process, like the auditor, we all played a really major role in that and sort of filtered out but that's not the way this works and you can say yes we confirmed but basically it's for practical purposes it's the chair unless we mutiny or something <laughs> okay um, and you know there may be people even running right now in other districts that I think would very well could pick somebody I really don't like so um, I think that it's there is a compromise and just sort of dealing with my fears and yet again giving credit to what you all are saying and the need for that level of experience I mean all the things I'm hearing I'm thinking our position should be six years based on the rationales I'm hearing here. Um, so, um, at anyway, four. at least four. <laughs> yeah, at, least four. <laughs> at least four. Just So anyway, I, I, I feel that this is a well thought out compromise and I will support um, Mr. Onishi's amendment. Thank you. Mr. Onishi? Thank you. I, you know, it was mentioned about um, the clerk getting that, um, I guess, experience of the elections, but for here, we have an elections administrator. So basically, the clerk would just kind of oversee, but we do have someone that's running the elections, and um, they're kind of like the neutral person because like as a clerk, it's like a little bit political because it's appointed, like Miss Willie said, the chair kind of selects the clerk. And so that becomes a little political. And so that's why you want to kind of keep them away from the election area. And that way you, that's why we have an administrator. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Ford. Thank you. Nationally, not only are the county clerks raising their level of professionalism and education in all of these areas, especially elections, but the supervisor of elections should also be raising their educational level. 
but we're only dealing with the clerk at this time. But there's huge issues nationally on elections that are coming down that require this kind of training. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nishi, did you have any further comments? No, before we close discussion on, on the amendment. Okay. Um, okay, um, Mr. Clerk, would you please um, call the roll for this um, communication 876.2, the amendment. Yes, on the amendment. Uh, Ms. Ford? No. Mr. Elegan? No. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Nishi? Aye. Ms. Pointexter? No. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Yoshimoto? No. Ms. Eoff? No. Uh, Chair Eoff, you have four ayes, five noes. Okay, the amendment um, does not pass. So now we're back to the... Um, Madam well, Chair. I think Ms. Ford has another Thank you. communication. I move to amend Bill 253 with the contents of communication 876.1. I need a second. Do I have a second from anybody? I, I don't know. Who. Okay, hang on. Can I, on for dis for second. discussion. Do you want me to take a brief recess? Down. Okay, Do for discussion. Look? Okay, I second it. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved by Ms. Ford and second by Ms. Willie. Thank you. Oh, okay. Ms. Ford. All right, I offer this as a compromise, and frankly, I don't expect the council to pass all of this, but I hope that you will consider passing some of it. These qualifications have come out of other jurisdictions, or excuse me, other municipalities and out of some of the national and international professional organizations of county clerks, recorders, and I forgot what the third thing is. And these were minimum requirements. I'm not saying that these are what we should adopt. I'm saying I've got it here for the purposes of discussion. As I mentioned early, earlier, nationally, this profession of clerks is doing everything possible to raise their level of knowledge. And so there's about three, or three organizations that we located where you can get training on various aspects of elections, election equipment. I read this off to you guys just a few weeks ago, the kind of training classes that are available. The issue is if you went to a four-year term, which we've already defeated, by the time they get trained, they may be out of a job and they can't implement some of these um, different abilities. So here's the basics for the public, for the county clerk position is a graduation from an accredited college or university with a bachelor's degree in business admin, public admin, or a closely related field. And then five years increasingly, this is the important part, five years increasingly responsible experience in complex administrative office work in a clerk's office. Now this said city clerk, it could have easily said county clerk and I can always change that. Which includes running a municipal election. The person who has the clerk's position should already know how to run an election. Whether it's here in Hawaii or on the mainland, it's the same basic process. And they know how to deal with the records and files maintenance agenda preparation, all of these things that uh, any clerk that we hire has to practically start from the beginning. And at least one year supervisory experience is desirable. Licenses and certification. A copy of a good driving abstract from the state of Hawaii or the state or county of residence if other, from, other than Hawaii. Possession of a valid uh, class C operator's license. This is a driver's license, your basic driver's license. And that should be within one month of the start date. They may already have it or they may transfer their license from another state. They obtain a notary public certificate within one year and they obtain a certified public official certificate or the equivalent a certificate within two years of the start date. And every year, they need to complete 20 hours of instruction. Now, don't panic over this instruction. Some of it is in seminars that go on twice a year, and every organization, there's about three as I said, has these seminars at different times, and you can go different places and get this. And there's plenty of online classes that they can take, so it's not gonna be that difficult to get your 20 hours in. 
Um, we do have to budget for it, however. And then to be an active member of a national or international clerk's organization, which they don't need to belong to until they're on the job. The deputy clerk, exactly the same thing with this exception. Instead of a bachelor's degree, an associate's degree and four years instead of five years progressively responsible experience. And the rest is the same. So these are the qualifications as a profession that is now being required or requested by people. Remember when we did the hiring for the um, auditor? We did a national um, advertising and remember Bonnie said to us, one of the things she said, the reason, one of the reasons that she filed for this job or she applied for this job is she wanted to come to the island, that was one thing, but it was a six year term. You don't get these kind of really super qualified people on two years and sometimes not even four. Now, I'm not saying again that every single thing should be exactly the way written. I'm willing to compromise on this, but I do think it's very important that we set some of these requirements in place because we aren't going to be the council next time. Some of us will be on here, but not, not all of us. And the next council can make other requirements that they want, but these should be some of the basics or at least some modification of these should be the basic requirements for a six-year term. And I would ask the council for their suggestions on how we could modify this to do what is best for all of us, which is a six-year term with some qualifications. Yeah, I disagree. Um, I think basically the position as I see it has two categories of requirements. One is a people person and one is a paper person. I think all of those things go to how good they are at paper, which is something you can learn. And I think what you can't put down in there is the part about being so much um, your ability to deal with um, personalities and crises and everybody having fits over different types of things and try to work with people. So, um, you know, I think the part about having the continuing education is not something that I would put in a qualification. I think that's something that we could add that we want whoever does do it to do. And I don't know if it's permissible. I'd like to ask our clerk a question. You okay? Go ahead. Um, you know, Stuart, I'd like to ask you, and I just off the top of your head, if you saw this, um, would you, you know, how would you feel like looking at this and you were hiring somebody maybe coming after you? What What are you, just your thoughts, just pros or cons? And um, do you want to make a comment? Don't feel you have to, but, you know. Well, I, I clearly wouldn't have qualified for this position mm -hmm. um, with those types of requirements. And I guess, um, I know in some jurisdictions on the mainland, the clerk records marriages and deeds and other things, and maybe that's why a notary is important, but um, we don't do that in our, in our county. And so I don't think necessarily being a notary would be that, would, would, would be that important. Um, I think the training aspect is always good to have training, um, but it is going to be something that we're going to have to budget for because I think most of the trainings would probably be off island, um, probably be on the mainland, and so you know that you know we would need to budget for things like that. Um, I I think that. I, I do believe you're correct in, in talking about the position being, uh, you know, having those people skills. I think that's really important because you are managing a lot of different people with a lot of different personalities, a lot of different issues, and um, sometimes a degree doesn't give you that ability or that experience. Um, and so that's kind of my general thoughts about it. Um, sort of just in, in a broad sense. Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
I think part of this, I keep going back to how the selection is done. Um, if, and I know that Ms. Ford keeps using examples of ones where we're all very, like the auditor, where we're all very involved in that. Whereas, you know, really when I heard about Stuart, I didn't even know who he was. It's not like I was even, you know. Um, so I, uh, you know, the way the system is now, really my concern is how the selection process is done. Um, I, I feel that who's ever the chair is going to make sure that they know how to do the job. I do like the idea of having continuing education. I think that kind of thing really gives a person, um, continues to vitalize them and, and brings them where they um, empower them to do a better job. So. Um, you know, I'm a little bit up in the air. There are things here that I think are good, but I there are, uh, you know, as long as I I really as now that we have said no to the four year, I'm going to vote against that. Um, so that's it. Um, if everybody wants to say, as long as the chair picks somebody Margaret wants, I'm okay. But I can't guarantee that. Um, and so I really, you know, there's just too much uncertainty there. And to bet on six years, I'm not comfortable. So thank you. Mr. Kern. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to support this uh, amendment in in any part of it. A um, couple reasons why. Um, one, I think it's just too much. Um, case in point, we wouldn't have uh, our clerk right here, Mr. Mietta, who's been doing a fantastic job. That's what we need. Somebody that can actually do the job, as I said before. Uh, secondly, if there are going to be requirements, like maybe there is some continuing education or something like that, do that after. Let this be voted on. Do, do the people want a clerk that's going to be in that position for six years? And if they do, the, 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 the following council can can put that criteria in there and say, here's what we want. We do want them to have this or that. But then it gives us the, it gives the, the flexibility of that council and future councils to be able to adjust that because uh, not to say that we're going to be able to get it right on this time and to do it in the, in the, in the form of a, of a charter amendment with that part of it is, is honestly scary to me. Um, the, the basics of do we want a, a clerk for this term, that's okay and this is the way it should be going. So um, I will not be supporting any of this uh, for those reasons. Thank you. Mr. Illigan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, may, I may I ask a question to the introducer? Is that all right, Mr. Yoshimoto? Ms. Ford. Oh, oh, the introducer of the amendment. I'm sorry. Are you talking the amendment? Of course I'm talking about the amendment. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, okay. I wasn't Ms. sure. <laughs> okay. Yes, you may ask me questions. Um, Council Member Ford, I wanted to ask you, you wrote this requirements. Is it because with these requirements, um, the outcome will be a good clerk? Absolutely. So if they don't meet these requirements, then that clerk is not a good clerk? No, I didn't say that at all. We have a good clerk who doesn't meet these requirements. So that's the exception? No, of these. I didn't say that either. So if you meet these requirements, so you could be a good clerk if you meet these requirements or not meet these requirements. So why are we even having these requirements? Because I believe that the level of professionalism will be improved by one, having a six-year term and having a clerk that's going to classes and learning this stuff. As I told you before, a lot of the classes are online. Um, and I believe that some of these responsibilities should come with the, the person. They should know how to run an election. They should have five years of responsible type of supervisory and uh, skills and all these record requests. Those are the types of things I think gives us a baseline for a good clerk. When we interviewed, well, I wasn't here during the interviews for our auditor. Okay, so. But I, you can I, get good either way. I just think this gives us a step up. A step up. Okay. So uh, I'm trying to understand you. I'm trying to understand this amendment. You're putting it up because it's a good baseline of who could be selected as a clerk. For a six-year term. For a six-year term. If we're going to, please understand, if it's going to be a two-year term, this goes out. It means nothing. Okay. If it's a four-year term, I'm not even sure this would fit. Of course, we're six-year term. You're putting these requirements. So I'm trying to understand that what you mentioned is that if the clerk 
follows through with training that you suggested here, which I think our clerk can do, or any clerk, that matter. Um, for me, what I'm getting out of it is that it's, I feel like the requirements for a good clerk, we can't just put it down on paper. We can't just be, this clerk has to actively train, has to actively improve. Um, I feel like the qualities that we would want in a clerk, we can't just put it down here. Um, and for these requirements, for the clerk to even possess these requirements that you currently written down, our clerk does not even have them, and he's a great clerk. So I know you're saying that they don't have to meet these requirements to be a great clerk, because as proof, our clerk does not meet these requirements, and he is a great clerk. And I think the qualities that he does possess can be written down on paper. And the only way we can really understand it is through the judgment of our own experience. And for us, as a council, we even have a hard time agreeing on one chair, let alone all nine of us agreeing on one appointment of a clerk. That's why we appoint a chair to trust in him that he will pick the right clerk for all of us. So as majority, that really rules our current uh, process. I feel like this is too much, and what requirements we need we can't put it down on paper. So I won't be supporting this. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Ms. I feel, too, this is very, very uh, strict and difficult. Um, you know, it says minimum requirements. I agree with the public administration or business administration because those things are very valuable um, when when you learn about organizational structure and dealing with you know human resources management and all of that those are important skills it is important skills but when we get into a minimum requirement of five years of increasingly responsible experience when we say be an active member of a national or international clerks organization I think those um, kind of restrict any of our island people and I'm about you know I like to see hiring people from our island versus getting somebody from the mainland now in, in positions like the auditor that's a different story you know that to me is very different in the qualifications I think I, I want to say thank you I, you know to council member ford because i think what you're saying is let's get something written but i also agree with council member onishi that we should wait for the people coming in on that next term to look at qualifications but i do agree some of these qualifications to me sometimes i feel is necessary at least in one or the other in the clerk or the deputy clerk especially with um, some type of degree in administration or public administration um, if you read up on it. it it's critical so I I agree that there should be some requirements um, I'm not voting for this because I think it the requirements are, are uh, you don't have any flex in it to say you could find somebody like our current clerk so I think we need some flexibility and that's why in if you look at most job descriptions if you go look on there there is some flexibility in a lot of things that we need to do, especially when we're do, doing public service kind of uh, work and stuff. But so I'm just not supporting this because I think it, it, it um, just restricts it too much. So thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Onishi. Madam Chair, I'm gonna call for the question. Second. Second. Okay, it was moved by Mr. Onishi and second by Ms. Willie, I believe, um, call for the question. Do we need a roll call vote or voice vote? Okay, uh, Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Ms. Ford? On the call. No. Mr. Ligon? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Mr. Shimono? Aye. Carry you off? Aye. Carry you off, you have eight ayes and one no. Okay, then um, Mr. Clerk on, I'm sorry, communication 876.1. 876 
the amendment uh, brought forth by Ms. Ford. Please do a roll call vote. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ligon? No. Mr. Kanuha? No. Mr. Kern? No. Mr. Nishi? No. Ms. Poindexter? No. Ms. Willie? No. Mr. Yoshimoto? No. Chair Yoff? No. Chair Yoff, you have one aye and eight no's. Okay, that amendment um, does not pass. So now we are back on to the bill. Um, bill 253. Mr. Kern? Thank you, Madam Chair. I call for the question. Second. Okay, there's been a motion by Mr. Kern and a second by Mr. Onishi to call for the question on Bill 253. Um, Mr. Clerk? Ms. Ford? No. Mr. Ligon? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Anishi? Aye. Cough. Oh, yeah. oh, aye. <laughs> Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Ms. Yoshimono? Aye. Ms. Eoff? Aye. Ms. Eoff, you have eight ayes and one no for uh, the call for the question. Okay, then can you please take a vote on Bill 253? Ms. Ford? No. Mr. Ligon? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Hanalua. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Nishi? No. Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? No. Mr. Yoshimoto? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Ms. Eoff? Aye. Ms. Eoff, you have uh, Jerry off you have six eyes and three no's. Okay, the motion carries. And Bill 253 will move to a second reading. Thank you, and I will turn the chair back to Mr. Yoshimoto. Okay. Thank you.